We've worked to restore nature in the mountains, the floodplains, the desert, and the ocean floor. But for this month's project, we decided to turn to a new ecosystem. Seaside cliffs. When thinking of wilderness, your mind might not immediately turn to cliffs. But due to their inaccessibility, they're a safe haven for a variety of species. Here in the Arabida Natural Park, just south of Lisbon, you can find more than 1,400 plant species, including rare cliff flowers and succulents that are found nowhere else on Earth. But as with everything these days, the area faces some threats including the overwhelming growth of the invasive ice plant. This plant produces large carpets, which slowly outcompete and smother the native flora. And as I'm sure you've guessed, this is where we come in. At Mossy Earth, we run a membership which funds and implements projects that restore wilderness and support underfunded biodiversity. Every month, our members pay around 10 pounds or 12 euros to plant trees and also support a wide range of rewilding projects, such as this one. Both myself and Tiago, one of our conservation biologists, had the pleasure of spending the first lockdown trail running, climbing, and exploring the cliffs and caves of this area. It was during this time that Tiago started researching the flora and fauna that live here. And now, after scoping out the project and getting additional advice from the Portuguese Botanical Society, Oh, and of course, getting the approval from the natural park authorities, we are finally ready to go and jump into action. So the first two species that we want to focus on are Euphorbia pedroi, which is a subsucculent plant that is adapted to dry conditions and can attain up to 2 meters in height and more than 2 meters in width. Currently, there are only three known subpopulations in the area, and it isn't clear to what extent these are connected. And then Convolvus fernandesi, which is a species of vine that grows on the cliff faces and at their base, and also sometimes climbing over other plants and shrubs. And in the spring, when its white flowers come out, they are a wonder to behold. We estimate the total number of mature individuals to be only around 500, although we really can't be sure, which is also why this project is so important. So first, Tiago wants to address this data deficiency, and to do so, he will be flying a drone over each area to gather imagery to use to identify population numbers of both the invasive and the native flora, which can then be tracked over time. This way, we can be scientific about our approach and make sure that we are actually making a positive impact on the ecosystem by measuring the results of our interventions against a baseline. These plants grow in hard-to-access areas, so we are planning a series of interventions to remove them. For this, we are getting the generous help of local volunteers and, crucially, the climbing community that shares our love for these cliffs. So today, we want to take you along on the first day of action of this project and show you what our work on the ground is all about. We picked the safest area on this cliff front for our first intervention. But as you can see, all the work is still very close to a big drop. And what we have to do is first we look to see if there are any native plants around. Um, and, and then the method to remove it is actually quite simple. You just tuck at them um, and we put them away at a pile. So you pull it off like that. At this point, you might be wondering why it's worth it to go through all of this just to help some obscure plants living on a remote cliff. So I'll let Tiago address that idea. Yeah, so, I mean, one, one answer to this question is always, I mean, at least for me, that biodiversity has an intrinsic value. So it's essentially the idea that uh, nature and, and the different species existing in their natural habitat um, is something that we value and we, and we want to protect. And for me, it's also interesting actually to, to focus on, on species that are perhaps neglected. So perhaps people don't find plants so interesting, but if these were, let's say, uh, pandas or, or a cuddly animal then, that only existed in this stretch of, of coast, then we would have a lot of people worried about this. So for us to be able to do something for, for a species that's not receiving as much attention is, is really exciting. After ripping out the ice plants, we stack them in large piles and cover them with a sheet. I think we will get a, a paper published. <laughs> on new <technique> for <laughs> 
The goal with this is to dry the plants so they lose some weight for transport. Because we do want to get them out of here and they are too heavy right now. Then to transport them we are exploring a couple of options including lowering them down to a boat in the water using ropes in a pretty complex operation. But for now the next stage of this project will involve more interventions. Many of them might include removing plants from more remote locations, which is why Tiago, who is a climber himself, wants to work as much as possible with the climbing community in the Lisbon area. In our first group of volunteers, we already had some climbers who decided to join us for the day. This area in these cliffs nearby Cap Spichel, right here, it's a place where I come to climb a lot. I love this place, it means a lot to me. And uh, when I realized that Moss is at the project here, I tried to get involved. And yeah, and here we are. So if you're a climber in the Lisbon area and you're keen to help Cliff Biodiversity, then please contact us using the form in the description. Until next time. Cheers!